Hi everyone, it's me again. Uh, first of all, I would like to send an enormous hug to my friend Diego Angel that asked me several questions, so I'll start answering them. One of his questions was, what, was, what were my biggest challenges? Well, there were several, I, I couldn't say it was one only, because this condition obviously affects all of the areas in your life. So one really, really hard one was for me about losing my job or having to stop working in what I used to work. And it was a really tough one for me because I was used to working all my life. I started working when I was 16 and I, and I worked in one or two or even three jobs at the same time. And I loved working and I still love, I do love working. So it was a really, really difficult thing for me. And I just had one of my dream jobs, because strangely I like jobs from different areas very much. I was a teacher in a bilingual school here in Mexico, in a primary school. So I love English, I love teaching, I love kids, so it was just an incredible job for me. But I started having problems, because I started losing my sight. And I was, mainly I was dealing with many, many, many fears. One of them was, what if I wouldn't be able to work anymore? That was to me just something that, that, that I couldn't understand. I couldn't even imagine to, to be in a situation like that. The second fear was, what would my family live off? The third fear was, what the hell would I do whole days long if I wouldn't go to teach and work? I, I was still way too young to, to not do anything or to, or to only do the housekeeping. And I'm not underestimating housekeeping. But I really love working, go and work somewhere. I, I really need that area. And, and it was just something that, that I couldn't think of and I couldn't imagine how my life would be. And obviously an enormous worrying, how, how will my family survive? Because we were renting a, a, an apartment that wasn't that cheap in Mexico City back then. Uh, and we had some other fixed expenses. So. I really didn't like the idea of depending on one seller in my family only. So what did I do? <laughs> I think we humans, like like all the animals, and I'm sorry for the comparison, in the nature we, we, we have this chip of surviving, I would say. So this enormous fear pushed me to, 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 to the point that I think I, I, could, I could be an actress, really. <laughs> What was my problem? My problem was I was seeing less and less and less and less and I didn't want anyone at school to know that I, that I can't see well anymore. So I had to pretend in front of my bosses, co-workers, kids, their parents, everyone, as if I can still see normally when, when I, I already couldn't see that great anymore. So that implied I, I, I had to take two buses from my house to come to school and I had to walk some, some parts. And I didn't use the cane, be obviously not, because that would show that I can see that great, so this was out of question. So I had to figure it out, how, how will I go to the bus? I, I already couldn't see on the bus, because the different buses would pass by the bus stop, so I couldn't see anymore which one was the right bus. So I had to start asking people at the bus station. I said, oh my, I'm so sorry, I can't see that great. Could you please tell me where does this bus go to? And then when I came to school, well, then I was on my own and I, I, I didn't have the opportunity to show any weakness anymore. So with the, with the loss of my sight, I had to invent more and more and more things to, to hide my, my situation. For example, suddenly I started telling my kids, you know what, <clears throat> I, I couldn't correct their works anymore at school. So I said, you know what, it's, there's another way of learning things. So, uh, so, and it's also very, very important, you should be able to find, find mistakes. So please switch the practice books and correct the practice book of your, of your classmate. Uh, and well, I, I, I wasn't able to, I had a list of students, for example, sometimes we would send messages to their parents. And then I had to make sure that everyone brought back uh, the signed paper and it was impossible for me because I couldn't see the names of the students anymore and signatures. So I said, oh, who wants to be my assistant? And, and I always got an assistant and the, the kid would happily help me out with that. And I had to be super creative with everything so they wouldn't figure it out that I can't see that great anymore.
it was freaking me out when we had appointments with with other teachers and with the director and, and with the owner we had activities where we had to read when when i couldn't see anymore i wasn't able to read anymore and when at, at the hour when the kids left home we were at the patio sitting and and one of the teachers would would call the kids when when their par parents would come to pick them up and mainly they would they would stay still quite some students when we already left so i had to walk between the kids and be careful not to step on lunchbox of any of those uh, of, of the kids or it maybe even step on the kids because my sight was already so so bad and i never figured out if if really no one no noticed anything if they thought i was so distracted or they were just so nice and, did, and they didn't want to upset me i i have no clue but no one told me anything and then in the vacations in one in one vacations i i had my 40th birthday they brought cake for me to school and my coordinator said that i should cut the cake i said no please you cut it for me please help me out and she said that she suspected that something was strange at that situation but she did cut the cake and she gave it to everyone i went home that day and i understood that that my sight is so bad that there's no way for me to teach anymore that it's too dangerous because of the transportation from my home to school that it's too dangerous to be in the classroom because the kids are seven eight years old they play sometimes they push each other not not really harshly but to, to play and, and an accident can happen if someone is supervising that can't really see and I said I, I just understood that I cannot teach anymore and back then I didn't have the contract for the new school year so it was really really difficult for me and it was so worrying that I suddenly got a fever and I was with this fever, fever I think like for two or three complete days only drinking some liquids and sleeping because it was so tough for me to, to deal with it and then I just decided to, to tell my owner how the, the owner of the school how the situation is and she is really one of I have to say one of the angels in my life because she renewed my contract and she helped me out to 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 get uh, retired uh, having a disability because without her help I wouldn't get any pension and it was that was for sure one of the toughest challenges in my life so far um, I don't know in case you are also visually disabled share please with us what what's your what's what's one of your toughest experience and if you're not tell me tell me what you think about my experience um, I'm sending you many greetings you're very welcome to comment to give some suggestions what you would like to see the videos about and see you here next Thursday bye